Hold on, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. I'm actually amazed that we're all friends. Mike, I will reach across this table and the whole entire world will hear me bitch slap you. you Not punch, slap. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick. Hello and welcome to Take On The World with... Johnny. Katie. And Mikey. Mikey Lupu. That's cute. Um, so here we are once again, episode 14. One four. The big one four. We're teenagers now. Yeah. Before you know it, we'll be driving, <laughs> doing some dope. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> this episode, uh, we're going to look at, uh, the life and times of Mr. Crowley. Edward Alexander Crowley, or Little Eddie, as I like to call him. Yeah. The mo- most wickedest man in the world. That's what they say. <clears throat> so, um, I'm just amazed at the, the amount of notes you have here. What? Well, there's just so much stuff. Like, um, like, you know how I approach it. I approach it by what questions do I have about Alistair Crowley? Why, why is he the most wickedest man in the world? Who was he? Where was he born? What did he believe? Uh, and then as I go through, I come up with more questions. So I add them to my list and I try to fill them out. But the the thick packet that you all have there <laughs> is like... Britannica Encyclopedia of Aleister Crowley. It is. <clears throat> but there, there's so much information out there. And honestly, <clears throat> after going through all of it, what made him wicked was the time he lived in. Oh, yeah. I can believe that. I mean, he was into a, the occult, and that's 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 not a popular thing with a lot of people. But, like, today, that's not a big deal. No. But, like, back then, basically, the things that he did and he was into is what made him wicked. But none of those things would be really considered super wicked these days. No. So, um... She's kind of a fucking bitch. <laughs> He's just this run-of-the-mill guy. He's a dude who has like, like to put penises in his mouth. He did that, <laughs> um, and he <laughs> slept with lots of women. <clears throat> but he also enjoyed the sweet embrace of a man. <laughs> I guess there's just nothing like it. <laughs> big old bear hug. He actually says that at one point. <laughs> Love combing my hands through his big hairy chest. Uh, he he founded a religion, actually several different sects of a religion, and. Uh, they're actually still in, in practice today. Was he a Satanist? In that time, anybody who was into the occult, I think, was considered a Satanist, but technically, no. No, I mean, did he actively practice worshipping Satan? No, technically not. Because I've I seen a picture of him where he had, like, the, I don't know, the upside-down star... On his, like he was wearing wearing some kind of like weird like hat. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it's weird because it like be bullshit. Like that, based everything he did was into the occult, but it wasn't necessarily Satan worship, even though that's what he was connected to. So over his lifetime, he was an occultist. He was a ceremonial magician, a poet, a painter, a novelist, a mountaineer. He climbed like all kinds of mountains. He founded the religion of. of Thelema. I'm gonna say it again, so I say it the same way. Thelema. Thelema. That was that was a consistent second. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he identified himself as a prophet, entrusted with guiding humanity into the eon of Horus. In the early 20th century, he wrote like 67 different books. That's a lot of books. Yeah. That's more books man. than I've ever read in my entire life. Well, it's not more books than I've read, but. That's that's a lot of books to write. Oh, the pit bull was barking today. Really? Yeah. Must be that fucking ghost. <clears throat> so um, trying to take his hot dogs. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, he was born in 1875, Edward Alexander Crowley. Oh, you want to go out, buddy? Go ahead. 
Anyway, back to business. Uh, his father, Big Eddie, was Edward Big Crawley. Ed. His father was born a Quaker, which is a, like a very strict Christian religion. Uh, the Quakers actually founded... That's like, if you're not from the East huh. Coast, if you're not from the East Coast, you don't know what a Quaker is. Like the guy on the oatmeal container. Yes. Huh. Uh, and then he converted to another strict, exclusive brethren, <clears throat> Christian fundamentalist, fundamentalist group. So wait, did all this shit happen in England? Uh, he, I thought he was American. This dude lived all over the world. He did live in the United States for a while, um, but he he's lived all over the world. He, he all he did was travel. His father was. Um, a part, of, he was in the family <coughs> brewing me. business. <clears throat> yeah, COVID, keep it COVID over there. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> it was the Crowley Alston Ales Company. And um, that allowed him to actually retire before little Eddie was born. Oh, wow. Um, his mother, uh, Emily Bertha Bishop, Bertha. always had a strained relationship with her son and called him the Beast. Which uh-huh. is a name that he basically embraced the rest of his life. Who went to school with this kid? We called the Beast. <laughs> he looked like a beast. <laughs> I worked with a dude we called Lunchbox. <laughs> He'd come in with this big igloo cooler for lunch every day. That was his lunchbox. <clears throat> Just so you can take car parts home with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how... Uh, Johnny Cash built his. Uh, I was just going to say that. Yeah. That's how you build a caddy. <laughs> One piece at a time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> he basically was sent to boarding school at a young age, eight years old. Uh, when he was eleven, his father passed away from tongue cancer. I didn't even know that Oof. was a thing. Now, what he did to get tongue cancer, <clears throat> I didn't want to know. <laughs> you keep chugging people's assholes, it's going to fall off. And it did. <laughs> he was probably a smoker. Probably smoked cigars. Maybe he was a dipper. Dipper, yeah. I don't know if chewing tobacco was a thing back in the 1875s. I don't know. It was back in our 1875s. <laughs> Thought they had cowboys and shit. Yeah, that's true. Some I would imagine. Chewing tag backy. Yeah. So, um, he goes to this boarding school. It seems like this is where he lost his. This is where he started to get his bad. His bad. Uh, well, his life changed, not, like uh, from everything I read, when his father passed away. At age eleven is when he started rebelling against Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, but it says right here, like his, the pastor of this school. Uh, oh, the headmaster. Yeah. He he was like. Believed to be, uh, damn it! What was it? It was right here. <laughs> Too many fucking pages here. But he was believed to be, you know, worse with the occult too, and had sex with prostitutes, and he. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the the headmaster of his school. They said he said he Alistair <clears throat> Crowley thought he was sadistic. That he just enjoyed inflicting pain on children. Yeah, it also well, said that he I had didn't... sex with. That was Pro- Alistair. That's, at age 14, he lost his virginity to one of the housemaids on his mother's bed. Little ninja. <laughs> Little ninja. Um, and that housemaid eventually ended up being a victim of uh, Jack the Ripper. She got fired. Small world. She fell into alcoholism and she ended up being a victim of Jack the Ripper, which was... I thought that was weird. Just really? ironic. There was irony there. What was her name? Her name? Yes. Uh, let me see. Said. I have it here. Number one. Uh, it doesn't say the name. It just says uh, housemaid, parents bed, mother found out. She was naturally furious, fired the poor maid. It is said by some that she embarked in a downward spiral of alcoholism before ending up to be one of Jack the Ripper's victims. <clears throat> Exclamation point. And then also at age 14 is when he had playtime with a cat. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm, like, reading it in his voice, and it's like, you see somebody, like, sitting here just writing this. Like, I didn't enjoy it, but I'm just going to go into great detail about how I basically tortured this cat until I was sure it died. 
Well, and then I, I, love how I was he, just playing with his corpse. I love how he prefaces it with, uh, I am, uh, I'm not a sadist and I, I don't like to torture animals. I've always been an animal lover. Except for this one occasion. I don't know. I, this, this one time, I gave a cat arsenic, put it over a gas jet, stabbed it, cut its throat, smashed its skull, and then drowned it, threw it out the window. To me, I don't think he really did that. To me, it kind of sounded like he was joking about it, because he did all nine of them. Yeah, I think we could all assume that, at that time, we know it's a figure speech. It's just, you know, a saying. Well, later on in the research, it shows that he is very squeamish about hurting animals. He doesn't... Yeah. And... It doesn't seem like he has any animosity towards humanity in any way, except he was a sadomasochist. Yeah, that's not bad. Hmm. But, like, if you read on, it seems like he was a very bright individual. It seems like he was a bright individual, but he, he, got, he went from school to school a lot. It, it looked like he went to, like, four or five different schools as a youth. And before he ended up at uh, Cambridge. Poor man had no consistency. But you don't end up at Cambridge if you're an idiot. Well, no. I don't know. So it says he railed against his Christian mor- morality of his upbringing by smoking, masturbating, having sex with several women, including prostitutes, and he contracted gonorrhea. Is that why railed is in all capital letters? <laughs> Yes. Okay, I was just wondering. That's real, dude. <laughs> More irony. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> that's, that's the part where I thought I, I misread it. I thought it was the Reverend Henry D. Archie Champney. What? was the one that... I just read it wrong, that's all. Oh. Um, <clears throat> Champney. He's a sadist. Yeah. So, I mean... He's way ahead of his time, I think. I think he was ahead of his time in a lot of things. Like, uh, like he, he lived from 1875 through 1947. He lived through the First and Second World War. Like, that's a... Not by much, but he did. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but uh, he was also a spy during First and Second. Well, oh. during the First World War, it, it, it's speculated he was a spy. The Second World War came up, and they said that they had discussions about using him as a spy again with his German contacts because he was thought to be a German sympathizer from World War One, hmm. and uh, which is some of the stuff that he did when he was in the United States, which we'll get over then. But um, I guess they decided, no, nah, no, nah, we really don't want him to be a spy for us this time. <laughs> kind of gives us a bad name. Like it, it, it was either like you really like this dude, or you couldn't stand him. Yeah, like that, seems that way. It was like it was pulled. There was no middle ground with yeah. that. Probably rub some people the wrong way. I'd imagine. So <laughs> was that a, a pun? <laughs> 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 one of the questions I had is why was he considered the wickedest man in the world? And it's mostly due his, to his promiscuous lifestyle, his participation in the occult, and the fact that he was openly, openly bisexual in a time when homosexuality was considered illegal. And I think really that's that's what it was like. He uh, he he like basically every cult you could get into, the dude jumped in, right. became part of it, and, and and then he moved on. But like he even went on to study yoga in the mystic sense. Like supposedly you get to a certain level of yoga and you levitate. Mm-hmm. Well, I said here he he linked up with the Krishnas. Harry Krishna was at the, at the. I don't know. It was some uh, Buddhist religion. The Krishnas, they're all into that meditation and chanting and you know outer body experiences. And but he was an accomplished climber too. So like, like See he, all he, the shit that you can get done when you don't have TV and Netflix and. Well, plus he was lit, when his father passed away. He got a third of and her, yeah that that uh, beer fortune. And he lived on that through most of his life until he just ran out of money. Mm-hmm. And then he, he sucked off some other dude, <laughs> his money. And It's not gay if you do it for money. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was he was a, a mountain climber. So he 
climbed the second and third highest peaks in the world, but I don't think he made it to the top of K2. That's pretty impressive because K2, I think it's the most dangerous mountain to climb uh, as far as mountaineering skills are involved. And they say Everest is the tallest. It's hard, sure, but if you have two strong legs and the will to keep walking forward, you can make it up Everest. There's really no mountaineering skills involved. So that to me is very impressive that he can climb. He well, he attempted even to climb K two because it's. I don't know if you've ever seen any videos of it. It's fucking wicked. Well, this uh, the other one, the third highest peak is at Kakin Jenga. Jenga. I was not going to attempt that one. <clears throat> anyway, supposedly on that expedition, they were climbing, and these guys said, "No, no, we're gonna we're gonna take this path here." And he goes, "No, don't take that path." And they got stuck in an avalanche because he didn't go with them. And I guess they were screaming from under the snow for help, and he, he, he just he just ignored them. Oh. So yeah, just I told you, fucking I told you, don't go that, that way, man. It. You didn't listen, so now you did. So um, he was widely blamed by the mountaineering community for for that tragedy. So anytime he tried to get an expedition together after that. Like people said, yeah, thanks, but no. Yeah, I don't have a lot of money to go climbing. Uh, can you help me out here? Yeah, you're gonna be with Crowley today. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Your climb buddy is Crowley. Uh, <laughs> shit. He hasn't been having a good week either. <clears throat> <laughs> He's over five. Yeah. He hasn't smoked meth for about a month. Of course, as Katie's dive buddy, she thought I'd, I'd d- just swim on and let her drown. And I he wouldn't really even did. I <clears throat> could have died 16 times. And Mike Mike was just trying to Titanic off the fucking <laughs> bus. Come on. That was cute. That was cute. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm dead. So, um, uh, one of the other questions I had was, did he perform human sacrifice? Because that was one of the rumors that they were... Him and his cults that he were was in were performing human sacrifice, and the answer was no. There's no evidence that it ever happened hmm. by him or any of his followers. And then hmm. the subsequent question is: Did they perform animal sacrifice? And yes, they absolutely did. Hmm. They said uh, some rites in occult organizations. He was required to sacrifice a small animal. But Alistair himself was very squeamish when it came to harming animals. I mean, yeah. That's, I don't know. So it wasn't a good thing to be his wife, girlfriend, or kid. Or pet. Yes, (laughs) or pet. Because I said, how many children did he have? He had four children with three different women. Um... (laughs) His first daughter, his first daughter Lilith, was born in 1904, and died at the age of two. Mm. He was traveling around. His wife was with the the child. He came back to them and found out that she had died like a year earlier, and he didn't Jesus. know. So Rose gave him a second daughter the same year, 1906. And he named her Lola Zaza for an actress, Vera Lola Lavelle, who he was having an affair with before she, his daughter was born. And by this time, his wife was a <laughs> rag- raging alcoholic. He just drives these women to drink. Oh, yeah. And supposedly, Lola was uh, sick due to fetal al- alcohol syndrome and died almost three weeks old, at three weeks old of bronchitis. That'll do it. Oh, no, she almost died. She didn't die. She almost died. My bad. She's still alive. Well, she's not still alive well, now. I mean, she was still alive. It'd be a goddamn miracle. She lived to be 84. Oh. Uh, Lola came to hate her father and had little to no contact with him over the years. She lived a long life despite her ill health at the start. My bad. Uh, she died on March 6, 1990 in Reading, Berkshire at age of 84. Berkshire <laughs> Mall. The Reading Berkshire Mall, that's where she died. 
She died of COVID-19. <laughs> what did Katie say? That's where all things go to die? That's where all things go to die. <laughs> uh, her third, his third daughter, Lee Hirsig? Oh, was from, was from Leah Hirsig. Yeah. Born in 1920. Uh, at this point, he really wanted a boy and was disappointed that he had a girl and nicknamed her Poopy. I think it, uh, I <laughs> Which means puppet or doll in French. Right. Get over here, poop. <laughs> Give me a poopy. <laughs> Piece of poop. Poopy, did you poopy your pants? I think it's Grab poop. me another I think beer. It's, it's poopy. Shithead. <laughs> Whatever. Like, poopy. There's a fucking dashy thing above the E. Yeah. Okay, poopy. Poopy. <laughs> that makes it sound so much Same more. Same fucking difference, yeah. It's, it's shit in French. <laughs> <laughs> Shit stain. And then this, the, the last one was, he, he was he was suing someone for for slander or libel in court, and basically the judge shit all over him. And took a big poopy all over him. <laughs> took a big poopy all over him. So he he in 1934 he he lost the verdict for his lawsuit, and basically the judge told him, yeah, mm. uh, it wasn't a fair trial, but that's what you expect in life. Nothing's fair. Wow. Yeah, like, like, brr. way to put it into perspective. This sir. guy's so, life to me is like so confusing, just all over the place. It is all over the place. Yeah, like, I'm an occultist. I'm a mountaineering. I blow guys on the side. I have a beer ven- venue. He kind of sounds like John, I'm, I'm, except I'm, not the mountaineering <laughs> part or the occultist part. I'm rich. He just blows guys on the side. I, uh, <laughs> I, I fuck chicks, but prefer the company. I banged some actress and then named my daughter after her as my wife was dying of alcohol. Uh, uh, what was it? She, what did they call her? Uh, oh, she was a raging alcoholic. Raging alcoholic. Did she die of that? Uh, she died in an institution. <clears throat> so, th- when he lost his court case, this 19-year-old chick comes up to him right after he walks out of the courthouse and says, I, I want to have your baby. So, he wasn't Jesus. even that good looking of a guy. Doesn't matter. Sometimes it's about what you have to offer. God. So he kind of looks like. Uh, I'll pull a picture of him up. So she ended up getting pregnant, having a boy, and then had very little to do with him. She probably thought she could like, get rich she, quick. She didn't. No, they were. They were... Hmm. Maybe she was just a freak and wanted him. <clears throat> wanted to test out how the old Crowley was. So, I want to just throw this out there. So, <laughs> there's a conspiracy theory that Barbara no. Bush. Yes. <laughs> I just read it. I just read it. That Barbara Bush was <clears throat> Alistair Crowley's daughter. <clears throat> well. Uh, one of the affairs he had someplace where her mom was, and then she shows up, and I don't know. I read it and I'm like, I just discounted it from my research. But when I was looking for the picture, that, that's the one that came up. Oh, he really wasn't. That he was, was a Brit, so he probably had bad teeth. That was after he was older. When he started losing his hair, he, he was like, you know, I'm getting older, losing my hair. I'm just going to shave my head. And then he put a special wax on his head that was supposed to attract women. Sex Jeez. wax. That's what all those bald guys do. Put sex he wax on He just like guys nut all over his head. He never washed it. <laughs> <clears throat> Rubs the lotion on its skin. Hmm. Well, it was like eight hundred more pages, Mike. I know he did so many weird things. So when him and Rose got married, I don't like the guy. You don't <laughs> like him? I don't like him. He was taking too many guys for you. <laughs> I think he's full of shit. But anyways, what do I know? So when well, when. What year was that? Where is the the marriage? Here it is. So he and Rose got married. Rose Edith Kelly. He 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 was someplace and, and he made friends with this dude. Sultan Kelly. What was his name? Anyway, he was friends with this dude, and this is this dude's sister. And she was in an arranged marriage. And he goes, I'll save you. I'll marry you. So you don't have to Going to the arranged marriage, which how is that any better? But 
Okay. So they considered a marriage a convenience. Um, they were newlyweds. They went to Cairo. It was 1904. When they got there, they claimed they were a prince and princess. They rented an apartment in which Crowley set up a temple room and began invoking ancient Egyptian deities. But their um, honeymoon night, their I guess their first night of their honeymoon, they spent the night in the king, the king's chamber, the Great Pyramid. Hmm. Oh shit. Yeah. Like that'd be kind of freaky. Yeah, that would be. But I mean, but. If- Still, you're a guy. Like, who else could say that? I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Totally banged her in the fucking king's chamber. Yeah. But... <laughs> and that wasn't a euphemism for her ass. <laughs> it was just a king's chamber. Sick. <laughs> Sick. <clears throat> so, so according to uh, Crowley's later account, Rose became delirious and, inf- and kept on saying to him, they are waiting for you, they are waiting for you, they are waiting for you. That camera just shut off. That's so fucking creepy. I had that camera running for two or three hours. Wow. He's got wiener skills. (laughs) Apparently. So, (laughs) she keeps on saying they're waiting for you, they're waiting for you, they're waiting for you. (laughs) I did the same thing. All right. We're good. And she supposedly goes in... Into a trance and leads him to a display in the museum. And the display number is number 666. Get right out of time. Mark of the Beast. So he took that as a sign. And then supposedly, um, a disembodied voice claimed to be that of Awis, <laughs> a messenger of Horus, and basically translated a book to him. And that was the Book of the Law. I am the law. Well, the book of the law is the, the basis for his religion, Thelema. Oh. Oh. What is the Lama? Thelema. Thelema. His religion. <laughs> You're supposed to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'll no, go back to it. I'll jump right back to it. I have it back here someplace. Yeah, you lost me. This guy has like 600 religions. What? Well, he first went into, what, the golden circle? <clears throat> that sounds king. The hermetic order of the golden cir- golden dawn. Oh. <laughs> Not the golden circle, jerk. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> the hermetic circle of the golden shower, what? So he learned... <laughs> he learned ceremonial... Cer- <laughs> ceremonial... <laughs> ceremonial magic and ritualistic drug use. Yeah, I bet. Watch him make your pot disappear. Poof. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Watch my dick disappear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen. Again. Again. <laughs> Again? Oh, man. You guys are sick. So, while he was in the Golden Dawn, he uh, got into a, a magic war with this WB Yates. <laughs> What kind of magic war? Like, supposedly Yates sent vampires to go after Crowley, and it just, they went back and forth. I thought they, like, stood there in wizard outfits and struck their magic wands together. No, they were literally playing that game Magic. (laughs) Again? (laughs) The card game? Yeah. Wow. My golden shower. So you were asking asking about Thalema. My golden shower. Thalema is an occult... (laughs) Anyway, Thelema is an occult religious movement that's still in existence today. Uh, today, embraced by a very, a variety of occult groups, <clears throat> including Ordo, Templus, Orentis, O-T-O, or I don't know what the other one is, Agentum Astrum, A-A. Oh, we know A-A. That's still around today. <laughs> that's a cult, too. <laughs> Thelemists strive to ascend to a higher state of existence, uniting oneself with higher powers and understanding and embracing one's true will, their ultimate purpose and place in life. 
the law of Thelema, do what thou wilt, shall be the law, the whole of the law. So, so I, I read into that a little bit, and they said, it doesn't mean do whatever the fuck you want. It means do whatever you have to do to become your true self. That's, I mean, that's a really loose translation. You know, actually, uh, that really does sound like the, uh, the, <clears throat> not the motto, but like some of the stuff from AA. It's like, believe in a higher power. Do, well, I'm serious. No, I'm listening. And, uh, what you just said. So I wonder, something tells me that I, I read something years ago that he was, that sort of like, one and the same like he was like the original father of that, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you're pulling that out of my asshole. I think you are. Out of my bleached asshole. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Enough of my shenanigans. Boy. What? He eventually divorced his drunk wife. Oh. Rose. That's, that's... Rose! He, he was frustrated with a drinking problem, but divorced her on the grounds of his own adultery. Makes sense. I'm an adulterer, so I'm going to divorce her. I'm divorcing you because I cheated on you. That's fucked <clears> up. <throat> Damn. But, uh... Their second daughter remained with Rose. And well, the, the two remained friends while Rose continued to live at Blokeskeen. Uh, Blumkin? No, Blokeskeen. <laughs> that that Blokeskeen place is pretty cool. That's That's a house that he bought. It's on the shores of Loch Ness. Oh, wow. And there are modern day connections to that uh, house. Supposedly, the song Stairway to Heaven was written there because Jimmy Page uh, bought the house later, years after he died, but not after Jimmy Page died, after Crowley died. <laughs> Little Eddie. Jimmy Page wrote the song after he died and bought the house. Yeah. <laughs> But he bought he bought that house specifically um, because the way the house was set up, it fit into one of the rituals he was supposed he was trying to do. Let's see, it's right here. Uh, nope, that's what I returned there. It says so much fucking information. It's a lot to process. And I don't want to just like read through and blather on all this shit. I tried to read it and remember. As much as I could. And hit the highlights. <laughs> like, he was in Calcutta. He was in Burma. And Burma is... What do you want to go to Burma for? Well, Burma doesn't exist anymore. It might. What do you want to no. go to Myanmar? Yes. It's Myanmar. It's me and my republic now. We're going to change lives. Did Once you bring Burma, any always guns? Burma. You know, we had a... When we had... The INS guys, the original INS guys there. There was a guy there from Burma. Did you bring any guns? <laughs> no, we don't believe in violence. You ain't changing shit. <laughs> wow. Hmm. I just sit here and make random movie quotes. Nobody ever forgets them. It's okay. <laughs> Not to reheat that chicken for the third time. <clears throat> Where else did this crazy fucking coop go? Uh, <clears throat> Burma. So okay. you, but he, he was kicked out of two different countries. So you, you, like, you he, like he was told to leave. You seem to be like not infatuated with this guy, but like, like, uh, <clears throat> like, you, like, uh, like interested in him. It, well, I didn't know. Like, what I knew about Aleister Crowley was that Ozzy sung a song called "Mr. Crowley." Mm -hmm. That's all I knew, and, and that's literally what, like. I just knew that he said they said he was the wickedest man in the world, but I I always thought that like he was sacrificing humans and and all kind, of, and when I the more I read about it, the more I saw that his lifestyle was frowned upon because of the time that he lived, like a lot of the stuff that his lifestyle brings now, like if he lived now, I, he wouldn't be frowned upon. I don't think he would be. I think he'd be more accepted. He'd be a society. fucking YouTube star, probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> making TikTok videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His handle would be Mr. Crowley six six six. Well, he he liked uh, the Beast six six six. His face would be on monster cans. <laughs> like when he Probably was have his own drink. Yeah. When he was supposedly spying during World War One, 
Stick this in your crawl. He was writing. <laughs> There'd be a sex position named after him. <laughs> the crawly. Crawly. <laughs> So, so you, that's why you have, a, you have a girl standing over pissing on you or screwing some guy. <laughs> it's like, no, you, you're getting a... You're getting that's a, the Crowley. You're standing up getting a blowjob holding a guy upside down and you just tombstone him. <laughs> that's the Crowley. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> he just finishes, finishing his... <laughs> In his mouth while he's knocked out and unconscious. <clears throat> we are horrible people. We are fucking horrible people. Uh. So, <laughs> by, by 1914, he was nearly broke. He was living hand to mouth. It sounds like he pissed away a lot of his money. Uh, he, he had duped some guy into supporting him for like 10 years. And uh, he actually, uh, when he moved to New York City, he was writing for Vanity Fair. Wow. And, and that's how he was making a living. He also took on, um, uh, I, I don't know, you call them apprentices, magical apprentices. He was teaching <laughs> ceremonial magic for money. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I still... That's what it reminds me of. Like, he was one of the dark wizards in Harry Potter. He was fucking Voldemort. <laughs> Not quite Voldemort, but like one step below him. Snape. Yeah, he was Snape. That's what he was. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so uh, when I said he was kicked out of two countries, he was kicked out of France. How did he get kicked out of France? Uh, he was. <laughs> he named your daughter Poopy. <laughs> 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 they frowned upon his lifestyle, and he got kicked out of Italy, where he set up his first um, uh, temple of Fia- Philema. I almost said it different that time. You almost said what? I almost said it different that time. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> to me, this guy sounds like he's somewhat of a celebrity, but he's sort of a charlatan. He's like doing whatever he can to make money and selling guy a bill, you know, bill of goods with his magic and... You know, he's a womanizer, and, and I don't know, it's just, but you agree, like, he's some, somewhat of a celebrity, how the hell are you going to come into New York City and start writing for Vanity Fair with Well, he, he actually, he, he did know the, the London editor of Vanity Fair. Hey, it's that guy that named his girl, his daughter after a piece of shit. <laughs> Earlier in his life, he had written for... Tony Poop here. <laughs> what? Are you done? <laughs> Sorry. Cognier poupé. You asked the question, I'm trying to answer it. <laughs> and you're three quarters of a mile down the road. Still yelling out the window. <laughs> Fuck you! Poupé! <laughs> oh, man. So, earlier in his life, he was friends with the London editor of Vanity Fair, and I, that's probably how he has got his connection when he was in New York. Because he had written some articles for Vanity Fair before, but it wasn't really for money before. Now he was doing it because he needed to earn some kind of money. Hmm. But what interested me the most, out of all the crap that he did, all the mountains that he climbed, all, all the... Dicks that he sucked. All the chicks that he banged. All the hairy fucking assholes he licked. You know, I'm pretty sure they didn't have... What do you think they didn't have like dick razors back then? You had to go with straight, no. straight blade? And you, ha- and I mean, how do you do a straight blade in your asshole? It's hard <laughs> enough to hold a razor with a handle in your asshole. How do you, how do you bend over, sir? I'm here for my asshole shave. Don't sneeze. <laughs> Alistair Crowley's asshole shavings. Five cents. His. <laughs> Come get your asshole shaved, help. <laughs> It'd be an extra five bucks for me to finish. <laughs> so. His influence on our modern society. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm over it. I'm sorry. A little late to the game, but I'm here. So, have you ever seen uh, the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper, Sergeant Peppies, Sergeant Pepper's (laughs) Lonely Hearts Club Band? We start talking about gay men. (laughs) All right, anyway. 
<laughs> the album, you ever see the album cover? Uh-huh. Alistair Crawley's on the al- album cover. Mm-hmm. He's one of the people. They were going to put Hitler on it, but they they decided against it. <laughs> it would be in bad good, taste. Good call. Good call. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, of course, uh, David Bowie references Alistair Crawley in the lyrics to the song Quicksand. Ozzy paid tribute to him with the whole song, Mr. Crowley. Um, uh, well, there was something else. Led Zeppelin? But yeah, Led Zeppelin. Oh, on their <clears throat> album. On their one album, on the uh, empty space bef- on, on the vinyl, before the center of the album, it says, uh, it has his, his, that law, the do what thou will. It's inscribed on Led Zeppelin three vinyl. Hmm. Plus, is the religion that is still practiced today? Makes you wonder with all those famous people. Well, I, yeah, I was thinking, but when I was researching this, I remember what you had said about I sold my soul to the devil, blah 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 blah, mm-hmm. and like, you know, kind of rings true to this. And then I watched that movie uh, yesterday. You ever seen that one? No. Where the Beatles didn't exist. <clears throat> I thought you literally said you you watched the movie yesterday. I watched the movie. Watched the movie quote yesterday. Yesterday. Unquote. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you ever see that movie? No. <laughs> you don't <need> to yell <laughs> at me. I'm just asking a question. Oh. No. Johnny, you ever see that one? No. A guy gets in an accident, wakes up, and the Beatles had never. He was a, a musician, but he sucked, and the Beatles had never lived. But the people lived like. He found John Lennon and asked him if he had a full life, if he ever wanted to do something that he didn't do. But so no one knew any Beatles songs because the Beatles were never a, a group. So he started singing all these Beatles songs and people were like, holy shit, that's a good song. And he became this huge rock star. Because the Beatles never lived. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I, I, it was a cool movie. It was a good, con- I think the, the concept was cool. <laughs> Katie's not convinced. Uh, I'm not a big Beatles fan, so I don't know. I dated a girl in high school who was a huge, huge Beatles fan. Like everything was Beatles, everything, and I really didn't know much about the Beatles. So every time we were together, she was playing the Beatles album. Got her like. So when you broke up with her, that's why I'd break up with her. Did you I smash all her albums? No, I did not. <laughs> Who's that one girl you smashed her record? You just smashed her album. <laughs> that was in the <laughs> Navy. <laughs> it, was, it was her boombox. Wow. <laughs> she kept on playing the same song over and over and over. What song was and it? Over. Um, uh, the one about Icarus. I don't know the name of the song. I can't think of it. Ask Alexa. What's that song about Icarus? Icarus. It's loosely about Icarus. Icarus Doc. Carry on my way. Oh, fuck no. I'd smash that boombox too. (laughs) What's the name of that song? Is that Sticks? No, it's... uh, Wayward Son. No, it's Carry On, My Wayward Son. What the fuck? What the fuck is... What the fuck's the song called? I had a synchronized swim to it in junior high school, and it forever ruined it for me. <laughs> you laugh. <clears throat> I swear to God, it sticks. Did you literally Google... Icarus song. Oh my God. Carry on my wayward son. By Kansas. Kansas. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I say it's about Icarus because he said he flew too high. You know. I would have never put those two together. Yeah. Ever. Like, ever. I knew a wrestler named Icarus, so... Well, anyway, she played this song oh, over God. like she was she was a bass rat. All she wanted to do is get on bass. So she would hook up with someone and then come on bass. So she had hooked up with someone, came on bass. I started rapping with her. And so then she started coming on bass with me. And she always had the stupid moon box. She would play this song over and over and over and over. And I'm like, listen, you play that song one more time. I'm going to smash that thing. And she played it one more time. And I smashed it. <laughs> That was the day the music died. 
That was a day I didn't get laid. <laughs> Ouch. That was like a, I don't know. Smash my pussy, not my boombox. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> wow. I shouldn't have said That's that. That's the day of all Some lotion. Box of tissues. Do you know what that song, Daddy Music, dies about? Yeah. Buddy Holly. And? The Big Bopper. The date. Yeah. And? <clears throat> and? I just heard this the other day. Like I, I kind of, I knew there were, it was a, a musical tragedy. I didn't really know who was involved. But do you know why they were on that plane? Prince. No, it wasn't Prince. Ricky. I know why. Ricky Gervais. They were gonna. No, yes. They were gonna. They <laughs> were gonna cancel the flight. Uh, it was uh, no. They they were they were on tour. And yes. They were in Iowa. They had to get to Washington. No, they were going to Minnesota. Minnesota, Washington. Or something like that. Anyway, they were on this bus, but this bus had no heat. And now I've been in Iowa in the winter. Like oh my, yeah, that's right. I was out. I was out to visit my dad over his birthday. He's he's a December baby, and uh, see New Year's Eve baby. And uh, we were out there, so we went out to dinner, and it was so freaking cold. We walked from the car to the restaurant. Right across your forehead, it got so cold, I got like a migraine from the cold. Just from walking to the... the... From the thermocline. From the thermocline. <laughs> was Richie Valens was the third guy. Yes. Then also... So, so they, they didn't want to get on this bus because one of them was not feeling well. The other one kind of had a runny nose. And they just didn't want to travel. The oh. seat, the one seat on, on the plane was given up like three times till. Uh, I think Valance got on, and uh, he said too that I read I read that Valance didn't want to get on, or no, it was Buddy Holly didn't want to. I'm still talking. <laughs> who cut who off? I don't know. <laughs> I think Mike feels like you cut him off. All right, continue. <clears throat> I thought this was a group discussion. <laughs> I don't think we're passing a stick or anything. I think we're just all participating. Um, I didn't know any of that though. Well, I knew about a little bit, but I didn't know. I just listened to a podcast the other day. Oh. Because that's what I do now. Now that we do this, I listen to podcasts. Surprisingly, I learned all this shit from the History Channel when it actually used to be the History Channel. They play a lot of World War II shit and mm -hmm. just history in general. But they did say that uh, Buddy Holly did not want to either go on the bus ride. He wanted to take the plane because... He wanted to wash his clothes. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> Man, it was cold. They had no laundry. They they he wanted to be able to wash his clothes and rest before they had to go back on there, stage. There was like three other things too. Like the Iowa date was added. Like when they went through the the town in Iowa, the the promoter just said, "Hey, I got I got you booked tonight." And they weren't expecting to play, <laughs> and they had to play. And they left the venue and went right to the airport, and the plane went off the runway and crashed. <laughs> And they said it was. They, they claimed it was pilot error, because the pilot didn't have enough experience to, to fly in the weather they were flying in. Mm -hmm. But that I, I, that's the day the music died. What about the yeah. Leonard Skinner plane crash? <clears throat> you know why that plane crashed? No, because the pilots never fueled the fucking airplane up. Really? They ran out of gas. Yep. That's messed up. And um, <clears throat> I forget. I think it was the bassist. They were all like. I guess one of the one of the engines went down and they were about to crash land, and Eddie Van Zant was took like some sleeping pills because they had a show early the next day, and he wasn't buckled in his seat. And they're trying to get him up to get buckled in his seat, and he's like, "Ah, get off me, get off me! I want to just sleep. I got to sleep. Leave me alone." And I think the bassist went up into the cockpit and he goes, "If this fucking plane lands, and you two are alive, he's like, I'm gonna fucking beat you to death." I'm sorry, I was listening, but Barbara Bush really does look like Aleister Crowley. <clears throat> Let me wipe it up for you. I'm oh, sorry. I get distracted. Squirrel. Anyways, now that we're halfway through this Aleister Crowley information. No. Um. <clears throat> yeah, let's get back to Aleister. I thought we were done. No, not quite. Oh, but your, in your information's all gone. 
<laughs> There's 11 pages. It's not all gone. We skipped around a lot. Here's here's where he says. <laughs> Although he used women casually and cast them aside, he still preferred the homosexual embrace of men. <laughs> and he invented well, the two in the paper on the stage. Why do you have homosexual embrace of men? I don't think that's Because necessary. I can hug John and it's not gay. Yes. Well, what's the difference between an embrace and a homosexual embrace? You're naked. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm Mike's in the shower. I just whip the curtain open and jump in behind him and give him a big old hug. Yeah, that's a homosexual embrace. <laughs> oh. But if I come in the house and I see John and I give him a, a bro hug, that's not homosexual. Not for me. Maybe for John. You think he ever tried docking? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Ugh. <clears throat> <laughs> uh. uh. <laughs> you have to have a pretty big dick to do that, I guess. Or Just what, a lot of foreskin. Would. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm snipped. So one of my questions was, <laughs> was he married? And yes, he was married twice. In uh, 1929, he married a Nicaraguan woman. But they separated a year later. They never divorced. And then she spent 30 years in an institution until she died. Much like his first wife, who was institutionalized for alcoholism until she died. Classy. He fucking drives the girls wild. Yeah, he does. Drives them crazy. Literally. Hmm. Hmm. So what is his last living offspring? Died in 2002. 2002. In the Berkshire Mall. Parking lot. <laughs> he was he was the one that fell in the fountain. <laughs> he was in a car accident. Yeah. <laughs> Last spot of shopping at Hot Topic. He was getting his bondage pants. Trip pants. He was getting his Hot Topic combat boots. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> well, that was rather... Uh... How old was he when he died? 84. No. Was he, was no, he still, no. Was he still fucking and mountaineering and doing all this crazy ass shit that he did? What's 1947 minus 1975? Um, Hold on, I have to use Towards the end of his life, he lived in like a, a, a like almost an assisted living apartment type thing. Yeah, show me date, Phoebe Burks. He was 72. 72? Yeah, yeah you beat me. There. Somebody, I did the math. Somebody my... had already done the math for you. I had to get I a did, I did the math in my head. <sighs> I'm just not good at math. Uh, he died of chronic bron- bron- bronchitis uh, aggravated by pleurisy and myocardial degradation. Because by that time in his life, he was a raging heroin addict. You need to talk into your mic. You can't hear me? No. Raging heroin Sounds addict. so far away. So far See, away. it just... So far how away. you accomplish all this shit? You doped up on heroin all the time. Because a lot of his ceremonies was ritualistic drug use in the ceremonies. The heroin he got hooked on when he was in uh, Myanmar. He got hooked on... While abusing morphine? He could be. I know he, he he had some kind of injury and he was given morphine <laughs> he or heroin. A tombstone with a dick in his mouth. Oh, here's here's another thing or I thought was funny. Maybe he a guy. That could be. his dick in his mouth and he bit <clears> too hard. Yeah, a bit <laughs> too hard. Oof. At one point he faked his own death. <laughs> Getting some visuals over here. <laughs> I didn't even think about that part. Your dick's in his mouth, you tombstone. That's what I said right Just away. Snap it right off. <laughs> that's the ultimate freaking. That's the ultimate mystic achievement right there. This. 
are we? So <laughs> really, who are we? He he faked his own death by. Did you say death? Death. <laughs> he said death. Uh, the death. <laughs> He's yeah, gonna man. go back and edit it out. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> death jams. I don't edit that stuff out. <laughs> Milies. Milies. <laughs> Millimeter. <laughs> Eight millimeter. I said the same way all three times. <clears throat> oh God. <laughs> are you are you done now? I don't know. Oh, the look on your face. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be waiting a while. I have so much to get out. It's gonna be a long time. Alright. I'm sorry. Well, there was a quote here I wanted. He wrote in 1931, in Berlin, all whores look like respectable women. And in New York, all respectable women look like whores. Reflection, they're all whores anyhow. That's what you took out of this entire thing, isn't it? No. All the research you did, no. that was it. No, I just have a couple. Something women tells me that the uh, feminist movement would not like him. No. No, I don't think so. Here's here's another quote from little what? little Eddie. It's a woman. Where's the trash can? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm a poet. I like my lies the way my mother used to make them." Ah. I like pie. One would go mad if one took the Bible seriously. But to take it seriously, one would already be mad. <clears throat> I don't know. It's not too far off. And, and he had a, a good quote for New Year's resolutions. May the New Year bring you the courage to break your resolution early. My own plan is to swear off any kind of virtue. So triumph. So that is triumph when I fail. <laughs> so he's just basically accepting the fact that he's a shitty human being on January 2nd. He murdered a cat when he was a kid. Yeah. And fuck the maid. <laughs> and fuck the maid. Well. Well, he was I only mean, 14. True. That's like every boy's dream, though. You know what I mean? Like To screw the maid? In that time, I would think. Maybe she's a really hot maid. Hey, Maybe let's... it's just the way she moved that feather duster. You, you want the me to she... dust the leaves on your ficus tree, Mr. Ooh. Preston? <laughs> <laughs> Bend over, flattening the sheets. <laughs> so banging a nanny was a thing. I guess. At 14, I don't know. <clears throat> he she only... probably had something on him. Blackmailed him. Maybe she got stuck in the. Uh, maybe she got stuck in the old oil lamp. <laughs> or the <laughs> oil lamp. I don't know what kind of appliance would they have back then. <laughs> 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 uh, he just came by. He's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> she got stuck in the tub washer. <laughs> <laughs> she was wrapped up in the clothesline. Yeah. No, it was on her mom. His mom's bed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> she was making the bed. He came in, pounded it out, said, have a good day there, lady. Good day to you, ma'am. Made him. <laughs> Threw a handful of napkins at her. Clean yourself up, you poor. <laughs> Make me a sandwich. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mean, I guess the good news is when he died, he had a dozen people at his funeral. It's more than I'll have. Now, what year did he die? You said 70-something? 47. 47? Yeah. Looks like, he, I mean, he had trouble breathing, so it was COVID. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah so he's a COVID death. And he's a, yeah, I mean, and he was cremated <laughs> and brought brought to uh, Hampton, New Jersey. Jersey? Yeah. I'm sorry to steal your thunder. No, you I was just go. going for my participation trophy. What's in New Jersey? <laughs> Alistair Crowley. Carl Germer's garden. <laughs> Little Eddie. Carl Germer was somebody met in Germany. Mm. He's buried in the burbs. So we jumped around a lot. Yeah, we did. 
<clears throat> but I didn't want to just like read off all this information about Alistair Crowley. I just want to talk about the stuff that was interesting. <laughs> I think we did that. And some stuff that was not interesting. John's homosexual embrace in the shower. <laughs> And the camera's off. The camera said, fuck you, you're done. I don't know why it would do that. Like, it did not do that once. I said try plugging it into a different outlet. Plug it in, plug it in. Don't well, ask me why. That's a good song, too. Maybe there's something with that outlet. It's not tight enough and it's overheating or something. I don't know. I hate when the outlet's not tight enough. <laughs> <laughs> that outlet over there is loose as fuck. <laughs> Stop, Stop sticking one. it in there. Use another one. <laughs> Use a different uh, one. Uh, <laughs> I really got to move around to find it. So, Stick yeah. one of these little weenies in my mouth. So, most of the information was correct. Mm-hmm. It might not be very interesting. We jumped around a lot. We missed a lot, but the other stuff is just filler. Like, he did a lot of crap <laughs> in his life. Yeah. Just fluff. And it shut off again. Now I'm creeped out. You said fluff, it went off. Fluff. Fuck you. Foreigner. <clears throat> so that was our delve into little little Eddie, Alistair Crawley. Thank you. The gonorrhea's. All right. Thank you for that, Mike. If it happens one more time, this house is haunted. You got a loose cord. It might be. Hmm. I have another plug. I could try the other plug on... I can put the other camera up there. So, all right. Anyway, that's it for this week. Catch you next time. Thanks for coming. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for putting up with us. Yeah. If you get a chance, try the tombstone. <laughs> try the Crowley. <laughs> the Crowley. The Crowley tombstone. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do it, Mike. Say the thing. No, I'm waiting for one of you to say it. Say what? Go go take on the world? Hold on, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. Yeah, I'm actually amazed that we're all friends. Mike, I will reach across this table the whole entire world will hear me bitch slap Wait, you. you Not me? punch, slap. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick.